Are you feeling the calling to start or grow a business that is so aligned with you and everything that makes up who you are? Do you know that there has to be a way to do this without so much hustle and without chasing the latest shiny object, but you're just not sure how? You can definitely have a dream business that improves, not consumes your life, that allows you to work with soulmate clients while helping you and your family financially and in all ways. You can elevate yourself to be the entrepreneur who has all of her desires. I'm going to show you how on the Elevated Femmes Movement. Hello, welcome back to another episode of the Elevated Femmes Movement. Today, I have an amazing guest that I'm so excited to chat with. I have known her, of her, um, for quite a couple couple of years, I would say. Um, she is a member of Kelly Roach's team and so brilliant, so smart. She, you know, she's she's got the strategy knowledge. She's got the mindset knowledge. She's a kick-ass martial arts um, expert. I don't even know what to call, call you in the martial arts world, but Kyrie Var is my guest today. Um, she's a mama. She is amazing. And I can't wait to pick her brain a little bit today and share with that with you. So stay tuned for the whole episode because there's some, some good stuff coming out. So Kyrie, I'm going to toss the mic over to you in a moment, but just to let you guys know a little bit about Kyrie, she, like I said, she is a part of Kelly Roach's team. She is actually director of business solutions um, for the Kelly Roach International brand. And Kyrie has this great story of actually starting out in Kelly Roach's program, just like, just like I am. And she went from being an entrepreneur to then changing over to being an intrapreneur. So Kyrie, tell us a little bit, tell us a little bit more about you. I know that you are, you know, you just moved to the US um, and you've got kids. Uh, so tell us a little bit of your backstory and then share with us how you made this decision to, to pretty much, you know, usually people go from being like an, in, like a, an employee to entrepreneur, but you actually did the reverse and you are yes. just shining at it. So Absolutely. Give us a scoop. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm very glad to be here. Yeah, I, I really do things backwards all the time. So <laughs> this will not surprise anybody who knows me. But um, so my background is actually in consulting. So for a decade plus, um, after I finished my master's degree in project management, I was actually leading teams of consultants and researchers in helping organizations like complete very big projects, right? Like new uh, transportation systems, campuses, and like very big projects. And I did that for a while, got to a point where I was like, you know what? I think I'm done. Like, I'm not really learning anything new. I want to do really important work, not just for these big organizations, but, but, but for individuals and helping women, helping uh, entrepreneurs, which I love this world. I feel like entrepreneurs are trying to change the world in some way. And I was like, I want to do something in that space and bring my expertise. So in, in 2018, I actually quit my job. On a Tuesday afternoon, I was like in a meeting and I decided, you know what, I think this is going to be my last meeting. <laughs> so <laughs> at the end of that meeting, 3 p.m., I resigned. And within 48 hours, I had my first client and that was a $60,000 client, something like that. And I was like, okay, let's go and we're doing this. So that's how a few months later, I landed on Kelly as one of my um, business coaches and started working with her. And at that point, I had already told everybody, including God and my family, that I would never work for anyone else. Like that was one of my big things. I was like, I know that I can do this and I want flexibility, which is something I have been looking for for a long time. I knew. My husband and I, since we, we met when we were like 18 or 19, and we had decided that we wanted to live on different continents throughout the year, right? Spend some time in Europe and then America and somewhere else every year. But that requires flexibility. And I was looking for that. So I had decided not to work for anyone else until one day I saw a post from Kelly and she was <laughs> looking to hire. I was like, no, 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 don't do this to me. But I ended up a month later after talking to her, joining her team, and it's been amazing. And I would tell you, yes, a lot of times people want to leave corporate or leave their job to uh, become an entrepreneur because they're looking for flexibility and more money. But what I was able to get here, which is the reason why now I'm going on year four of doing this, 
is I'm getting the same, I would say, advantages of being an entrepreneur as an entrepreneur in this specific company is, you know, you make as much money as you want. You're, we're doing the same things that the clients we're coaching are doing. We're building our own brands. We're making our sales. We're doing the same things just in a bigger, I guess, capacity and impacting more people at a higher level than if I were to do it on my own. And I think that was the biggest driver. Yes. Yeah. You, you're you like spelling it out so brilliantly, so well, because um, I think sometimes we think the only way to be successful, the only way that I can ha- have success is if I do this on my own. And mm-hmm. for some people, yes, that's totally the case. But I think you're, you were also very, well, you're very intuitive from what I know about you, but you're like, you're very, you're able to see the big picture, right? Like by linking arms with Kelly, you were still going to be able to do the things that you wanted to do a little bit differently. Right. But the, the, I think the main thing is that you wanted that flexibility. You were still going to have that. Um, and you were going to, to have, like have so much knowledge being a part of her team by, you know, having access to everything that she has access to, because I know that she does so much for her team. And um, I think you're just a great example of like the possibilities out there. Mm -hmm. And more and more, I think, in you know, especially after the whole pandemic thing, I think it's becoming more and more um, possible for people to be able to have the types of work situations, whether it's a business or, you know, a career within someone else's business or someone else's company, because people need flexibility and and being in person stuck at a desk all day is not, that doesn't need to be people's um, only version of success, you know, or climbing the corporate ladder, sitting in an office. Um, So, yeah, I think I also, I resonate with with your career path a little bit, because I consider myself also in, an entrepreneur because the way I work with clients is I don't, you know, I don't have a big agency in my podcast business, but we work with a few clients and I'm still in that phase where I'm getting to that growth phase. So my growth phase, then it's, it will be to scale what I'm currently doing. But in the meantime, right now, I'm working very closely with the people that I'm working with. And I, I feel like I'm their partner, right? I feel like I know everything that goes on in their business. So in a way, I am an entrepreneur, even though I am an entrepreneur too. Um, but it just goes to show that we can create the types of businesses that we want, the types of careers that we want, and um, redefine, redefine it all. Uh, And not being attached to just one way of how it's going to show up. Like for me, what I was looking for, I was initially thinking it it was going to look like me owning my business. And then it transformed into something completely different. And a lot of times people don't stop to be open enough to the other opportunities because they're just stuck on that one way. So if there is just, you know, just a piece of advice when opportunity knocks, like sometimes just take the time to explore it. I literally had for a few days to stop and meditate on it and have a few conversations with Kelly just to make sure that this would still get me to my goals, right? And at the end of the day, it looks different, but it's probably so much better than what I could have done, especially with the pandemic on my own. So true. I think for me also... Because my first job, uh, my first, um, my first business was a fitness as a fitness coach and, and lifestyle coach. And when I decided to to hit pause on that business, I was a bit lost because I'm like, oh, don't I need to be a coach in order to, you know, scale a business? And you know, when this podcasting um, production business came to me as an idea. I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure. And I actually hesitated to, to go all in on it because I wasn't sure if that was really the thing that I wanted to do um, or I couldn't see the big picture right away. And then as I started to kind of give myself time to really, you know, go at my own pace, because sometimes, you know, we, we you don't make the decisions like right away or overnight. Um Sometimes you do need to give a little, yourself a little bit of space to be like, okay, what what is this going to look like? What are the options here? And um, that's how I was able to to create what what I've created. Um, yeah. So could you also share with us a little bit? Because I know that you you're so good at because Kyrie, um, 
you know, she, like I said, she's a part of Kelly's team and she would do um, calls in, in the group. And, you know, a lot of her teachings were strategy, but a lot of it was also mindset. So Kyrie, how would you say, like when you're working with somebody, when you're um, um, consulting with somebody, how do you help them assess like what they need to focus on in their business? Because sometimes we get to that point where we're like, all right, I've been doing this thing, but it's not really working. I've tried that. I've been feeling a little stuck. Mm. Do you have, do you have like your, your, your secret recipe for helping them move forward from that place? Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, That's actually my favorite thing to do is being in front of business owners and like that one-on-one conversation or sometimes even in a group setting, but where you have the opportunity to ask them the real questions. Mm -hmm. And it's the number one thing is to realize that it's very hard to do this piece on your own. Like that the reason why people go for mentors or coaches, et cetera, especially if you can have some type of of relationship with a human being who can act as your mirror that's really important. Like I still do it. Just a couple of weeks ago, I was like, Kelly, I'm struggling with this thing. I need a one-on-one, right? And we jump on a call and that way you can get a mirror. Uh, but it's really asking the, a lot of questions. And usually people will know. They will know what's going on, but a lot of times they don't necessarily accept it or they they kind of diminish it on the scale of things. It's easier to blame a strategy than to really look at what we're not doing or what how we're not really focused on how we're not staying on course for long for a long enough period of time. And I always tell people, I always tell my clients, people don't have business problems. They typically have human problems that are showing you know symptoms in the business. At the end of the day, the business is on a, it's not an entity. Right. It's just you, your ideas, and your actions. That's what your business is, right? And so when something's not working or we feel stuck, uh, I find that just asking a lot of questions and asking the right questions and listening will typically get people to what they, where they need to get to. Of course, I know that for me, the background that I have in auditing businesses and and working on strategy helps me look at the different elements that could be in, at play. But I would tell you that 80% of the, of the time, it's not really strategy because the strategy is there and it's already working for somebody else. So it works, yep. right? And the way that we do it, you know, like we focus on the individual's strengths to design their own strategy. So that should work. But again, it's entrepreneurship, which is a lot of time, personal development as well. There's things we're stretching out of our comfort zone. We're pouring our heart out. And sometimes it's just hard to do it in front of everyone, especially using social media. And so having those questions and having that interaction with the entrepreneur, so we can really dig into what's really going on. That is, showing symptoms in their business, people are very surprised sometimes. I've had people, I remember doing this call um, and it was probably one of the most impactful moments for me coaching a client because we were talking business strategy, marketing and how things were not working, et cetera. But I started getting this intuitive hit to ask a specific set of questions. And what came up out of it was that she was actually very afraid of succeeding because she was afraid that if she did succeed, her husband would leave her. Now, how? what business strategy can you give to somebody that's powerful <laughs> enough to overcome the fear of your husband leaving you if you succeed? Does right. that make sense? It's like yeah. sometimes it's stuff that don't, we know it doesn't even make sense, but we're afraid of voicing it or saying it, but that doesn't make it less true. And it's just uncovering what that is so we can actually get back on track. Yeah, you're so right. And think of this, but there's this whole thing, this whole concept of like the unseen, right? The unseen in business. And a lot of times it's stuff that we don't want to look at, right? Because we don't want to look at the things that make us uncomfortable. We don't want to look at the things that scare us. Um, But yeah, you're so right. It's about, um, because we are all human beings after all. So when our humanness seeps into the business, that's when... That's when things get tricky, right? (laughs) Yes. And really, at the end of the day, that's what entrepreneurship is, especially if you're a solopreneur, right? Now, then when you start having team and so on, now it's you and another human and all of your 
problems combined and compounded. Oh, yes. And that's now we need to nav- navigate. That's called leadership, right? But <laughs> at the end of the day, it's a lot of like, it's just human interaction and human emotions that's involved in here. So it's mixing the business strategy with, we call it mindset. It's definitely bigger than just mindset, but um, all of those facets of, of the entrepreneur. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. So like I said, you just moved to the US um, from Canada, I believe, right? Um, And you're doing some really fun things. So can you share with us a little bit about what is on Kyrie's radar right now? Because you have, like you mentioned to me before, you're all about just like living your life and having fun. And I think that is so admirable because as a mom of two young kids, I mean, I admit it. I blame a lot of things on my kids. Like, oh, I would do that, but you know, the kids. Oh, I would go there, but the kids. And you're like, I'm doing the things and I'm bringing, like, I'm taking the kids, but you know, <laughs> like you're yeah. not, you're not letting the kids hold you back. You're not letting certain things um, stop you from doing what you want to do. So tell us a little bit about what you're do- like the fun adventures that you're, you're going on and your, I guess, like your philosophy about like, yeah. why not? <laughs> Yeah, I love that. The why not? Okay, I'm going to name my my philosophy exactly like that. So (laughs) here's the thing. I think the biggest uh, shift happened for me several years ago when I got extremely sick. So I used to, you know, be be like most people I know, you know, I'm going to let until my I'm going to wait until my kids are a little older and then I'll do X, Y and Z. Right. But I also knew that from the moment that I met my husband when we were like teenagers, we knew we wanted to travel a lot. I was able to travel a lot when I was a kid, him too. And we were like, we want to do that as well for our children and expose them to a lot. And we had this really weird way of seeing our uh, our lives and how we were going to live on different continents every year and so on. But back in like 2009, 2010, the idea of being, you know, all over the place and having a career still was really hard. You know, it was hard to fathom. And it took me after my master's degree back then in 2009, it took me two years to really land a position where I could be flexible enough. But for me, that was the idea. Like I've always been like, I have a goal. Let's figure it out. There is a way always. What is the way? And let's find it. So that's how I started the first piece. But then it took many, many years and having children to figure out the rest of how are we going to really make this flexible? And uh, with the pandemic, I guess the world, the universe just conspired to make it even easier and starting to work with Kelly. But we really dived in deeper in what our goals are and what type of lifestyle we want to have. And what we've been talking about for years, living on three continents is something we actually finally made happen. That's why right now I'm in the US. A few months from now, we're going to be in Europe. Probably by the end of the year, we're going to be somewhere in Africa or somewhere else, right? And that's, it's super fun. People think we're crazy because they're like, (laughs) you have two young children. And the one thing that was hard for us to figure out, to figure out was how were we going to get the kids out of school? Like, how do we combine schooling and traveling the world. And so back in in um, September, it took us probably a week to decide that we were just going to homeschool the kids and pull them out of the regular school system. But we were like, hey, let's do it. So we wow. pull them out. Now they're homeschooled. I have a, yes, pretty demanding career. I still train in and teach martial arts. And we're traveling the world. And wow. I would not change the experience for anything else. Like it's so important. Once I got really sick and was able to recover from it, I was like, you know what? Life is way too short. (laughs) You know, the the, the illness was bad enough that I could have gone at any point Mm. and it got very close to that. And I was like, you know what? There's no point in waiting. And what better example and what better memories to leave with these children than seeing their parents just do the dang thing and just have fun and take risks. And um, that's what we're seeing in them as well right now, just because of these choices we're making. I love that. Yes, you're so right. What a great example and what great experiences they're they're living, seeing new places, meeting new people, new cultures and all of that. So that is so fun. I'm definitely going to be following you on social media to see where you guys go and (laughs) follow your adventures. Uh, So Kyrie, thank you so much for your time today for chatting with me. And um, if anyone listening wants to 
get to know you a little bit more, follow you? Where where can they learn more about you? Yes, I would say the best way to find me right now is on social media, on Facebook or on LinkedIn at Kyrie Var. I am still the only individual with that name, it looks like, on Google. <laughs> so you'll find me at Kyrie Var on uh, Facebook or uh, on LinkedIn. Great. And we'll have those links so you guys can just click on them and follow her. Um, but thank you again so much for being here as my guest. And thank you for listening to this episode. I hope that you enjoyed it. Um, and I will see you, I'll see you guys again next time. Bye. Thank you for listening to the Elevated Femmes Movement. I would love to hear your thoughts on the podcast. So please leave us a review. If you know someone who could benefit from the episodes on the show, please share it with them. We need more women elevating to their highest potential, enjoying all the great things in life, having plenty of time freedom for their children and loved ones, while doing things smarter and not harder and growing a business that improves, not consumes their life. To connect with me and download my free resources, please go to www.juliamhickman.com.